Hi, thanks for joining this session. Um, I'm Eva, and I would like to talk to you about my recent work from my PhD on the jet breakup in drop on demand with, in the presence of surfactants. So this is an important problem because drop on demand includes some very small time scales, and we'll see that has a big effect on the distribution of the surfactants. Like a few words about what drop on demand is. So in drop on demand, we generate droplets when we demand, when we want. And that's happened through like a pressure impulse uh, that's um, applied to the chamber that squeezes the ink out and generates the droplets we want. The jet is breaking up due to surface tension, so the flow is a surface, surface tension driven flow. And this is happening quite fast. So we expect the surfactant concentration as the new surface generation forming not to be uniform, not to cover the whole new surface that's generated to create these droplets. Therefore, since we have surface concentration gradients, we'll have uh, surface tension gradients. Therefore, we, have the, we expect to see a dynamic surface tension phenomena, dynamically both in time and in space. But the drop on demand goal stays the same even when we have pure solutions that we want to generate a single droplet with consistent volume and velocity. The governing equations for that problem, um, we have like an incompressible uh, flow, fluid. So we have the, like the simple equations. However, uh, the important boundary condition that we have here is the one uh, covered in the orange box. Normally, when we have a pure solution, we expect to see uh, the tangential uh, stress condition to be zero because we have no gradient of the surface tension, because the surface tension is uniform and constant along the surface. However, now, as you can see the schematic on the right, we'll have like surfactants on the one side and less surfactants on the other. We'll have this gradient of the surface tension, which gives uh, this new boundary condition that we normally won't have. Uh, the fluid doesn't change uh, its complexity, so it still be a Newtonian fluid. So the stress tension we use is still the uh, Newtonian stressor. Uh, however, for very high surfactant concentrations, it has been seen that when surfactants start forming micelles, you might start be, you might you might start see behaviors for like a viscoelastic fluid. However, this is like extreme cases where very high uh, concentration above the CMC, the so-called critical micelle concentrations, which is not in the con in the concept of like this work, but neither in the ideas of like the drop on demand, because you are even more complex to be the dynamic surface tension. A different part, like another part of the model is the how we model the surface tension. So we use a, a Langmuir Frampton equation of state, which it takes into account the uh, pure surface tension. So this is like without any presence of surfactants. And if it's like in that empirical law, we will have this logarithmic fit. So the important parameter here is that uh, gamma, that gamma is the uh, surface concentration uh, of the surfactants, and this maximum packing concentration is always estimated empirically. Surfactants are very difficult in general, but experimentally we cannot see them. So we cannot say they're packed, the maximum they can. So the maximum packing is an indicator of how many surfactants can pack in a specific area. So if there are more, then either they will go back to the bulk or they will just go further to the surface. So in order to get that, since we cannot actually see and say these are how many surfactants they fit, uh, they estimate that by fitting, by me we measure the surface tension of the fluid and we just put uh, for different concentrations, gamma, sorry, and then we put these values and we estimate the gamma. So normally that has like a logarithmic form, so it starts like that, goes down, and then when it doesn't decrease anymore, it reaches the equilibrium surface tension, that is normally the CMC. So that's like the highest concentration you can put because the whole surface is covered. What we know dimensionalize the equations, two important parameters are right, especially the strength factor, which we'll focus on later too. Um, the strength of surfactant beta will be in front of the logarithm. And that indicates how fast we reach that equilibrium surface tension. So the higher the beta, the stronger the surfactant is because you need fewer surfactants to reduce the surface tension. And that K inside the logarithm will be the initial surfactant concentration. So the equilibrium concentration is like how much you have at rest. 
and closer to the parking, which will be like a fully covered. So for this study, we'll focus on a fully covered initial meniscus. So meniscus is where the uh, surface rests in the nozzle to have a fully covered meniscus at the beginning. The surfactant transport is modeled by like an induction uh, diffusion uh, uh, equation. Uh, the important parameters here is that the advection is the dominant mechanism in this case. The time scales are very small and the surface diffusion is very small as well for these time scales with the uh, surface packer number estimated around like 10 to the power of 5. So diffusion is not important here. The advection part, which as I said is very dominant, is captured by a moving Lagrangian mesh. We'll give a few details later. Um, the bucket change for this study, and as we'll show from the diffusion and the time scales we have, is negligible. So we have no transfer between the bulk and the surface. All the surfactants stay at the, on the surface, and there's no time for them while the surface is generated to fall back to the surface if they're more. Uh, so these are the assumptions we have for the model. How do we solve that? Uh, we use the code that we have published in. Uh, uh, my first PhD paper uh, in physical review fluids and based on the work from the scholastic fluids as well from Morrison and Harlan, we will use a finite element method. Uh, the mess is Lagrangian, so it moves with the flow, so we can capture this delicate involved uh, free surface in it with the surfactants of that surface. So we generate the surface, uh, the surface might dilate or like contract and then the surfactants move along with it. Uh, the initial condition for that uh, problem and boundary condition as well is the is a waveform. So there are three parabolas that generate this pulling back where the meniscus going back and sucks things from the nozzle. It's pushing it out, so the velocity is positive, that's the upper uh, parabola. And then it retracts back to go to the initial equilibrium resting position and we'll have like the pinch off from any other time. Uh, this waveform, normally you see this as one of the first picture on the, on the slides, it's lower than a pressure um, square waveforms, but for this model we, use, we want the initial velocity and initial condition for the velocity, so we use the generator from the flow rate and we we'll have this uh, velocity parabola waveform. The flow assumed to be axisymmetric on uh, where the axis of symmetry is in the center of the nozzle. And as I said, we assume to have like Newtonian fluid because that's a factor that won't affect that. But this method can be applied to complex fluid by just changing the stress tensor at the beginning. For this work, uh, we work with uh, the group in uh, Twente, the physical fluids group, with uh, Michael Ramp and Tim Stegas, and we conducted some uh, experiments where they first validated the Newtonian case, the Newtonian pure solution case, sorry. So we have no surfactants here, and these are the specifications for the experiment. And as we can see, we have very good agreement between the, um, the jetting behavior for the Newtonian, for the pure solution and the code. Small discrepancies can be attributed to the, the lack of actually knowing the velocity waveform. We can generate the pressure waveform matching the velocity waveform for initial conditions just estimated by the uh, moving of the meniscus. So now when we add like some surfactants, we added uh, Triton. So Triton is a quite common surfactant in uh, engine industry actually. However, it's quite weak. Remember that data that we talk about, the strength of surfactants is only 0.1. And that can be seen from the um, pictures as well. So on the left, we have water. On the right, we have the uh, surfactant solution. And we can see that it, really there's not very big difference in the jetting behavior. Uh, However, we see that small difference around the neck, the uh, break of neck. Uh, and if we go to later time, we we'll have like identical break of um, break of time, yes. And the ligament length as well hasn't changed at all. Again, we see like this differences in the uh, necks. So that like some small threads that it has been seen like from work from like uh, Bassano's group when they study the repeated thread formation in ligaments with surfactants. However, still the effect is very small for this weak surfactant, the 0.1. What if we wrap it up that strength? So 0.1 was 
um, triton. What if we do 0.2, 0.3, 0.5, up one? So what we see, uh, we move like with time from left to right of the screen, and we can see that the stronger the surfactant is, there is a delay in the break off time. Like you can see that the 0.1 has already broken off, while the one and the 0.5 they still stay attached. So that's a good indicator that by adding a surfactant, we, we can a strong surfactant, we can change the break of time significantly. And we'll raise the question: Can we actually? ignore like have no break off at all and have like a single droplet which this is the out uh, the outcome we want the answer is yes so we used uh, quite viscous fluid like viscosity of seven, uh, seven compared to water always um it has like not, not point not not seven pascal per second uh, pascal, pascal second sorry viscosity uh, and we added a strong surfactant so it's a factor of one um, and we saw that actually, while the pure solution will break and form that small satellite, which therefore, if it's like fast enough, it might capture, it might coalesce with the main droplet, but it's not always sure. Uh, compared to the surfactant's case, where the ligament absorbs in the droplet and creates that small, cute, almost snowman like near the festive season. So we can see that actually the addition of surfactant can change the break off time, can prevent the formation of satellites. So that's something very useful to know, especially for like the generation of new uh, surfactants or creating like new, uh, more complex inks. So now that we saw that surfactants are important and they change the, the behavior, the question was like, okay, so where are these surfactants? So in this graph that I will, this video will show you now, will be the, the color will be the surfactant concentration along the free surface. So as you can see from the beginning, there is a high concentration at the head of the drop. So this is just what about to generate. The surface uh, is generating quite fast, so surfactants are not moving that fast to go and distribute uniformly. However, there is a quite big difference between the, surfact, the strong surfactant and the weak surfactant. You can see that the strong surfactant on the right have like a very uniform concentration compared to the weak surfactant, where the surfactants at the beginning that just stay all overhead, and then they move all around as a whole thing at the back. They don't have this uniform concentration around the final droplet. The next question we asked is, why can that happen? The key force, the key mechanism for this problem is the surface tension gradient, as we said, which we can also say as Marangoni force or Marangoni stress. So how does the Marangoni stress look like for these two cases? So in the 0.1 case, we can see that we have this high concentration of surfactants there. However, because the surfactant is very weak, it doesn't decrease the surface tension that mass, if you remember the equilibrium concentration, the edge of the mass, sorry. Therefore, since they don't change the surface tension a lot, there's not strong Maragoni stress. So this, the, the Maragoni force doesn't help the surfactant to redistribute because it's very weak. On the other hand, on the graph on the right, you can see that the uh, surfactant is now with the concentration there, just now the maximum is just for that. So it's the uniform we saw before. We see that because it's so strong, even if they're not so many as concentrated as in the beta equals 0.1 case, because it's so strong, it just decreases the surface tension very much. Therefore, in that area near the neck, there is that strong force, that strong gradient, and therefore that strong stress. So it helps the surfactants redistribute better. And also that can explain why we see that change in the break off time. The Margoni force acts in two ways. It redistributes the surfactant around the surface and it also acts against, opposed to the break off of the um, main droplet in the ligament, of this further expansion of the uh, surface. So that's very important because now we explain why uh, there's a delay break off and why the surfactants don't distribute that way. This, it's all come to Maragoni forces, but now we know better why. 
because I had a small spoiler alert by pressing something by accident. So drop oscillation is a very common method that we use to measure the surface tension as we develop in time. However, there is a big assumption that the concentration of the surfactant is uniform, and as we saw, that is not true. However, it's still a very important mechanism and method to measure surface tension on in flight. For small oscillations, where we have like from the small shape, we go there up to uh, 10%. Uh, Prosperity, LAM, they have both proven that we can use the small oscillation theory uh, to capture the oscillation of the height, of the maximum height of the droplet. So if it's there, then we capture that. So we always capture the top point. The amplitude of that height uh, decays exponentially following that. The important thing here is that this uh, value, that value, the, the decay and the frequency can give us two very important fluid properties that we want to estimate. We always focus on the slowest decay uh, uh, mode, the L equals 2, because we just care about that, we don't care about translation sometimes. So that decay rate, that decay time, and one over that, the decay rate, will give us the viscosity. It can be estimated like that, and it can give us an estimation of the viscosity of the fluid. While the frequency, it can give us an estimation of the surface tension. What I was keep saying, like, all this time is that surfactant reduce the surface tension. But what we saw is that in, th in the frequency, there's very small change. So surfactants, it seems that uniformly, because that's the big assumption of the oscillation method, they don't reduce the surface tension. It looks like it doesn't reduce the surface tension all around the droplet, because as we see, it reduces it locally. However, we see quite a big increase in the decay rate, which is the viscosity. But as I said again, the we assume that the viscosity doesn't change because we don't have so many surfactants there, we don't have masses, so it shouldn't change. So what can the, that viscosity be? We call it like as effective viscosity. And what it, what's actually happened is if we look at the flow inside that oscillating droplet, we see that the addition of surfactants on the right, it reduces significantly the tangential velocity compared to the water on the right, which is still quite strong. What, other, what else we can see is that in the case of water, which is the pure solution, we have this strong recirculation around the uh, axis of symmetry. Uh, while in the surfactant case, that recirculation is smaller and a bit further closer to the outers. However, the important thing is that this tangential velocity is way smaller. So it acts, we see that the surfactant basically acts as solidifying the surface. And here we see like for different uh, times. So starting from here, from the maximum height, we have like these um, oscillate, these uh, recirculations. But as we move forward, the tangential velocity are small. All these because of this solidification of the uh, surfactants. So when we read measurements from the drop oscillation, we should be very careful how we extract how we explain this result is not just to change the viscosity. There is something more delicate happen on the surface because the fact that they're delicate, delicate creatures and they just, when they go there, they, no, they don't actually change the viscosity, the bulk viscosity. They change the surface viscosity, the effective viscosity of the total fluid. So for the conclusions of this work, what I would like you to get out is that, first of all, we did like a study where we compared uh, drop on demand engine printing with simulations and experiments in industrial and electric scale engine printings. We normally we have seen before uh, cases for like filaments or large droplets up to millimeters, when we normally have something in micrometers. What else we saw is like the jet breaker, there is an important difference uh, with the surfactants. We reduce the equilibrium surface tension almost by half. Remember how like 72 for water for uh, 9 per centimeter, went up to 35. However, on the whole jet breaker, it seems to have little effect when we use uh, these weak surfactants. However, the strongest surfactants do show a difference in the ligament break-off time. And as we saw in that nice case, kind of like snowman thing, uh, almost prevent uh, satellite formation completely. Uh, 
uh, how we explain that the Maragoni stresses, they produce a more uniform surfactant distribution uh, for the stronger cases. So this distribution is that is that the one that causing the uh, delay in the break off time. Um, for the drop oscillations, we saw we uh, studied that method, we investigated that method using our simulations, and we saw that instead of having decreasing the uh, frequency, therefore the surface tension, it increases the decay rate, which is the viscosity. But as we said, it's, it should be very careful not to consider that as the bulk viscosity, but it's just the surface viscosity. That's why I have the code. I don't know a better, better black term. Uh, and so therefore we call that the surfactants actually rigidify the surface, which is a very important thing because they increase the dissipation. So surfactants have, seem to be more complex than we thought, without going to scare everyone. Uh, and I think, especially for the jet breakup, we can say that maybe we can develop further surfactants to reduce that uh, prevention of satellites. And for the drop oscillations, we saw that actual surfactants can change the effective viscosity a bit as well. And this is my email, a few references here. Uh, I will close with the conclusion again. Thank you very much for joining this online meeting. and. I'm very happy, I'm very glad to answer any questions of you in these one-to-one uh, -one meetings or the chat. Thank you very much.